Old man, the story's got everything. Orient Express. Beautiful Russian spy murdered in Samplon Tunnel. Filthy pictures. Secret cipher machine. Handsome British spy with career ruined murders her and commits suicide. Sex, spies, luxury train, Mr. and Mrs. Somerset. Old man, it'll run for months. Welcome to the James Bond Complex. I'm Matt. I'm Edgar. And uh, we are a podcast that covers James Bond 007 from Fleming to film and everything in between. And today we are covering the novel From Russia with Love by Jan Fleming, published in 1957. That is accurate. This is book number five? Cinco. Cinco. So um, I'll start with the... uh, Plot synopsis? Plot synopsis. Because I don't remember anything that happens in this book. I need you to help me, Matthew. <laughs> oh, let me Just as in the next episode, you will not remember anything from the film. No, nothing. <laughs> I already forgot the film. <clears throat> the leaders of Smirsch, the Russian counter-espionage organization, have decided that to redeem their organization after a series of humiliating failures, they have to prepare a trap to humiliate a Western spy organization. Their intended victim... James Bond 007. Bond is to be murdered in a way that will even humiliate the entire British Secret Service. Kronstein, a military strategist, and Grosukleb, the head of operation, came up with the perfect plan. Their bait, a beautiful cipher officer, Tatiana Romanova, and a specter encoding machine. M receives a fabricated story of a clerk who fell in love with a dashing secret agent through a couple of photographs from the head of section T. Karimbe in Istanbul. M decides to send 007 to get the girl and the Spectre. Bond, through the help of Karimbe, finally gets the Spectre machine and the girl out of Istanbul on the Orient Express after multiple adventures. Things take a tragic turn when Karim is murdered and Bond is left alone with Tatiana. But help arrives in the shape of Captain Nash, an agent sent by M. Unfortunately for Bond, M never sent help. Nash is, in fact, Red Grant, defector turned assassin for Smirsch. He drugs Tatiana and has Bond in his crosshairs when he reveals that how Smirsch has planned for his death for months. Grant explains to Bond that his murder is meant to appear as a bizarre, humiliating murder-suicide and that the Spectre machine is actually also booby-trapped. Through quick reflexes, Bond not only survives being shot by Grant, but actually kills his would-be assassin. Bond has a final encounter with Rosacleb at the rendezvous point where Grant was supposed to meet her after completing his mission. After a brief struggle, Cleb is put in handcuffs and is about to be sent away before she gives 007 a quick kick on his leg from a secretly poisoned blade in her shoe. Bond faints and dies. Or does he? Thus ends the last James Bond book ever. Well, actually, that's what I, I wrote my synopsis for that particular reason. Because um, the twist at the end that he faints and he... Well, you don't know if he's alive or dead. Is he, he's, His breathing becomes difficult. He's panting and he falls to the ground and it's blackness. That's how the book ends. Those are the last lines of the book. And it's a, it's a quite a surprise, but after so many years it's it's people know he comes back i mean the i think he has where book number five uh fleming both wrote uh, uh if you compl- as books i think it comes up to 14 books so uh, we're I think not so. even With the short stories it might be 13 or 14 books thereabouts yeah so we're not even halfway through it so we know he, he survives but at the time that was oh my god james bond is dead that's quite a finale yeah there's a lot of bad omen in throughout the book it's friday the 13th mm. there's a bit of mysticism just dash dash of uh because he's being hunted down by a werewolf of some sort apparently mm. so it, that's something I, I i want to approach to start the podcast i think it's quite fascinating it makes uh from russia with love a uh, unique book in the bond canon it is for those reasons In addition to the fact that, uh, you know, the commonality in the previous book reviews we've had is, well, the chapter one is 
maybe Bond doing this or that, or an unrelated character doing this and that. And then chapter two is the M scene, and chapter three, Bond is on his way. Not so in From Russia With Love. We don't see Bond for, in my version of the book, which I forgot to take out of my bag, I think it's page 100 yeah, <laughs> when some, we see some, Bond for the first time. Something like that. I think the entire first half is the Russians planning. Yeah. And it's quite fascinating. I mean, they, they introduced one of my favorite characters in the book, Red Grant. What? And, well, that is, in fact, the first chapter. The first chapter is Red Grant uh, resting uh, poolside with a masseuse uh, who is... We're, we're sort of experiencing the scene from the point of view of the masseuse, and she is less admiring her, not her body, but his body, more so horrified. She can sense this unnerving, it, it, there's something skin-crawling about Red Grant. She can sense that there's something not right about yeah. this guy. She can't quite put her finger on it. Maybe it's the eyes, maybe it's the hair. Something is amiss. This man is not a real man. He's weird. And he's built like a truck. Uh, so it frightens her. It's a wonderful, wonderful chapter. It's also incredibly detailed, just how he's describing not only the masseuses, what she's doing, but sort of the muscles and how hard they are, how firm they are. I mean, Fleming is creating a, a monster right here in front of our eyes in the first chapter of the book. Um is Bane. <laughs> Bane. <laughs> no, no, but I, what I, by that I mean his only mission is to destroy James Bond. Like he's an obsession. And if you read the Batman comics, Bane is the character that broke Batman's back. But just because he was obsessed with breaking Batman's back for some mm. reason, he had an obsession. But that's the same for, for, for Grant. He's obsessed with... They, they, they even train him for months and months to just to kill Bond. And they plan this thing. They introduce Kronstein, who doesn't... Like, he appears early in the book, and he never comes back. Uh, and they also introduce a character that's completely missing from... Well, we'll go through the uh, film adaptation in due time. But General... Uh, yeah. General G. I know... He, I, he, by For for uh, long stretches of that chapter, Fleming just calls him General G. But he does give his real name. It's like... It, 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 it sounds it's like, like okay, a very, sure. very punny name. Like, I, I need to... <laughs> kind of, it does, actually. It, it does sound like uh, somebody... Like, that, that, that's an awesome chapter, by the way. The, the Smirsh meeting where General G and these... Uh, higher ups in the various secu uh, security and intelligence agencies of the Soviet Union are together in this room, and he's. It's funny because as General G is describing what their recent successes and failures have been, and what their what they hope their plan to be in his mind, we also go into General G's mind, and he's thinking, "This is how we do it: the carrot and the stick." So the carrot, no, the the carrot is when he says, oh, this has been good and we're doing a fairly good job. And then he hits them with the stick by saying, but there have been this failure and that failure. And he's actually enjoying the reactions of the men at this table. Very scheming, nefar nefarious character, this General G. We, we don't see him again either after that. I would have liked to have seen that guy yeah. again, I think. Uh, he's a character they could have brought back. Quite fascinating. And a lot of the, uh, per, the 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 cases they mentioned are actually based on real uh, cases. Um, there's a case of Igor Guzenko, a defector, and he, uh, he you know, he also another reference they make that's actually based on fact. All the mo I don't know if it, all of them, but um, a lot of the defectors that came from from, from Russia to uh, the West, a lot uh, some of them uh, grew Guzenko ended up in Canada. Actually, he died in Ontario. Oh, really? In the oh, early eighties. Yeah, there you go, Mississauga, Ontario. Great Wikipedia picture of him. He has a bag over his head. He actually looks like a member of the you know what. Uh... Sorry. <clears throat> also, Kuklov. That's another reference that's made, uh, and he defected, um, and he tried to poison him with thallium, which comes back. Uh, I think they they still they they're, they're a f Russians love poisoning people. At the time then, of this recording, and now. there's something very big happening in the news. It was a former Russian agent who was living in England, mm -hmm. and him and his daughter were recently... I don't remember what the toxin used was, but yeah, it's quite striking how uh, uh, either these other agencies internationally 
they're better at keeping it a secret <laughs> and the Russians are just not good at hiding this stuff or the Russians are in fact very keen on getting rid of you through um, toxins in, in very uh, scheming uh, cloak and dagger fashion. Yeah, um, so we have the meeting and we're also introduced to another favorite of mine, Rosa Klebb. Oh God. Now she, we'll get to the film when we cross that bridge, but man, if you had to ask me which Rosa Klebb do I like more, the film or the book, I don't know. I love the Rosa Klebb in the book. I love, I her. love her in the book. I love her. A toad. She's I, a toad. She's a toad. <laughs> That's another one. Uh, we had Mr. Big as the shark and Rosa Klebb is the toad. Yeah. And she's, um, oh, she, she's described as really not very clean he keeps referencing a quote mustache like a yellow mustache above her upper lip <laughs> what do you mean a yellow like okay so she might have a little bit of hair some women do what do you mean a yellow mustache what the f are you talking she about probably uh smokes no yellow mustache it's well she probably has a lot of facial hair that she probably dyes to some some women do that to instead of like pulling or uh, camouflage it almost. Yes. Well, yeah. if everybody's calling it a yellow mustache, it's a pretty piss poor camouflage attempt. It is, and I think that's the point probably. Yeah, she. Well, I'll put my my notes away for a little while, because um, I just out of memory she has tick classes and she there's a quote I don't remember it. I think it's General G or Constantine. They 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 talk about her sexuality, and she. I heard a lot, a lot of people saying that she's gay. I think she's more bisexual. For her, it's just a niche she has to scratch once in a while. She doesn't care. Man or woman, she doesn't care. It's funny. I thought that was Grant, but I think you're right. No, 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 no. I think you're right. I think that's Rosa Klebb. I, I, unlike previous recordings where I tend to have finished the book like just a couple of days before, I read the book like a week and a half ago, so some details are starting to escape me, but I think, I think it's actually Rosa Klebb. She does engage... In, she does fornicate, but it's almost, as as you said, it's, oh, there's this little itch. I must get rid of it. I'm going to screw someone now. There's really nothing much else to it. It's yeah. Very basic. It's very base. Um, I love uh, Matthew. I love the line uh, when Rosa Klebb has ordered... Tatiana to uh, come to her room to explain what the mission will be and after explaining said mission uh, changes clothes oh. and poor Tanya her, I remember the line she, Rosa Klebb looked like the ugliest oldest whore in the world <laughs> love it love it oh yeah that's a and I, I think her garment is see-through also yes it's just more disturbing um and also they describe a that she loves torture and she has a sort of a an overhaul that she puts on and she goes to see people getting tortured and she doesn't want to get any on herself so she has this thing that she she covers herself and she all it's always dirty and so, uh, just little details that make her well just as general g in his conference with the heads of the security agencies refers to the carrot and the stick that is sort of rosa kleb doing that as well because she will partake in the torture session insofar as attempting to soothe oh, yeah. the torture e you know my dear my you know don't worry it's almost over we're going to take care Just tell of me you. with that you know precisely Be exactly nice. oh yeah and she... even tanya makes that remark uh, not, not not verbally it's it's in her head it's fleming's description of her thoughts where there's a brief passage going back to the chapter where they're together in the room and she tanya is sort of thinking like Oh wow, she seems very like calm all of a sudden and quite nice. So again, that carrot and the stick. It's nice. It's awesome that we had we we witnessed General G implementing that. But the fact that Rosa Klebb does that sort of um, emphasizes the point that it, that is the smirch strategy. So I like that Fleming emphasizes that a little bit in the first half of the book. Really uh, enjoyed that character or creepiness. Um... So uh, the creepier she, honestly. The creepier she is, the better. I'm no, all for it. I love it. She's a villain. If, if she was nice and wonderful, and uh, what the hell? No, and she needs to be creepy. It goes but. to show you how strong she is in the book, because predominantly, 
maybe because I've seen the films more often than I've read the books, my answer in most cases will be whatever's in the movie, but this one's tough. This one's tough. Yeah. We'll discuss it when we get yeah. there. Um, so we have, they, they start planning, and I, I find it, it, it is, uh, it, is a, it is a scary, scary plan. No, because you have an entire government planning to kill one man. <laughs> Like, think about and, it. And they want One, to do it in a particular way. Uh, they can't just go into the streets of London and assassinate it. They ha it has to be more public than that. It has to be, it has to strike. They want to kill a hero. I think they use the yes. word hero. So they want to strike at the heart of British pride, British nationalism. They want to break their ego or wound their ego at the very least. So very, it's very sneaky and very cunning. Yeah, it's, it is, um, it's quite it's terrifying uh, honestly i'm like wow that that is a scary thought having a government playing the murder authorizing the murder of one man it's just ooh, it's a scary thought but really? there is one problem this man is james bond <laughs> <laughs> yes um so we uh also we are also introduced to tatiana romanova romanova what are your thoughts on her now, it's been one of the joys I've had of doing this podcast with you, Matthew, is is you know, everybody likes watching the movies. Duh. But it's been reading these books or going back to these books for the first time in a few years. I think the only one I've read consistently is actually Casino Royale. The other ones, it's my second read and the first in many years. The most interesting ride so far has been the rediscovery of the Bond Girls. We have an amorphous blob, we have a damsel in distress, we have a great cop, we have intriguing, if not super helpful, and now we have Tatiana Romanova. I'm having trouble pinpointing her on my scale. She's... Hmm, a lot of dead air all of a sudden. No, <laughs> but I... I you know, she's not... She's not bad. She's not bad. She's not bad at all. She's not a damsel in distress, no, but she is... No, because she's agreeing to do this. But she's coerced in doing it. That's yeah, true. So, I, there's a part of her, and again, we, we try to separate these episodes a little bit, like movie, film. I find it's a little bit difficult in the case of From Russia With Love. But watching the film... And maybe this is not what I should have been doing in my mind, but watching the film, I feel hammered home some points that came to mind while watching the uh, while watching the book, <laughs> while reading the book, but that I wasn't certain of. And here's some of those points. Uh, Romanova is very young; she's 24, 25, I believe, in the book. So she has not, as described in Fleming. Yes, she's Russian. Yes, she's proud of being Russian. But she has 24. Not, 24 years old. Thank you. But she has not been weighed down that much by the system. So there's, not yet. There is still a little bit of ambition, hope. May, one would maybe say naivete. And I think because of that, yes, she's coerced into doing the mission. Yes, officially speaking, she's doing it for Mother Russia. There's no question about that, officially speaking. The sense I got as the book goes along, because Fleming will go back occasionally into her mind, not as much as Gallibrand, not as much as maybe um, Tiffany Case, but every once in a while he'll go back into Tatiana's thought process. And the sense I was getting is it started with a mission for Rosa Klebb, and it turns into an opportunity to actually leave Russia, because this James Bond bloke, it's not half bad. <laughs> She's a good actress. I love I love the scene where she appears in, in, in his bed. It's a great scene. We'll get to that. That's where we see the Tatiana that's still playing the game. She's acting. She is the Smirsh agent. As the story evolves, especially on the um, on the train, are they on the Orient Express in the book? Yes. Yeah, they're yes. on the Orient Express. Especially on those Orient Express. Uh, chapters, that's where I'm getting the sense that she's no longer acting. 
she's made a decision at this point. She, she wants to get the hell out of Russia. And she actually kind of starts to like James Bond a little bit. Yeah. So that's what I... So I think it's an interesting journey. There is growth there. It's maybe just not as emphasized as much as your Gather Brands, your Tiffany Cases, though. She she is a damsel in distress, but she's... You know, that the difference is the villain in... in, in the plot, because uh, in *Live and Let Die*, she's clearly a kept woman. She mm. in this one, she's bait, she's used, she's almost a victim of circumstance or of circumstance of the but state, of the state, and the state is. I, I see her more like a princess than a damsel. Does the word Romanova not hold uh, royal ties? Of oh my some God, sort? You are, you're, you're right. Oh my God, it's by design. She, she, she's from. She even relate that. Fleming's a smart guy, and he does his research. She, it could very well be by design. So. Oh, I feel stupid now. No, it's it's clearly by design. She's she's a princess in, 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 in peril, and the state is the dragon. Bond is Saint George. He's gonna slay the dragon and rescue the princess. Princess yeah. Romanova. The, from the, the horse being the Orient Express, the dragon being Red Grant, Romanova being the princess, and Bond being St. George. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it works out. It, it adds up to a degree. I'm not going to disagree with it. Yeah. So, um, Yeah, she, she's been the most... I feel in the previous episode... I shouldn't say stuff like previous episode. I'm, I'm referring to the book episode, Diamonds Are Forever. I thought at that, when we were recording that episode... I had the most difficulty describing my thoughts about Tiffany Case, uh, but I feel describing my thoughts about Tatiana has been even more challenging because she is a little bit hard to grasp. Uh, we don't really know when that turn happens. Yeah. It's not like, oh, she likes Bond and she wants to get out of Russia. And she, yeah, it was also um, just like Grant is trained to kill Bond, she's, tr she's trained to. Fornicate. Seduce. Yeah. Seduce. With, with Bond. So she, I mean, part of it, part of her obsession with Bond is probably uh, because of her training. And it's, I don't know how much training and what they did. You know, rereading this book and having just watched the movie Red Sparrow, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's I a, seen Red Sparrow. There's a lot of parallels. There, there's a Rosa Klebb in Red Sparrow. There's a Rosa Klebb there. Uh, well, both both characters, the character from uh, Red Sparrow and uh, Tatiana, are both former ballerina. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and both are going are trying to go from. For all we know, Tatiana went to Red. Sp Maybe she's a sparrow. We don't know it for sure. Uh, well, yeah, actually, she could be a sparrow. If they did a mothered version of uh, From Russia with Love, it might look like Red Sparrow, actually. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's Red Sparrow there, and this movie, both characters, they, so it's a little bit, it, it, this reading, this movie has tainted a little bit my, my, uh, view of that character, uh, but I don't, I, I see, I, uh, Tatiana is much softer, I, she, I, she's still human, uh, and the character from, uh, Red Sparrow, she, I don't know, I didn't, um, particularly care for that character at the end. And when you have a bunch of American actors speaking with um, fake Russian action, I, 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 I've been thinking of Boris and Natasha and Moose and Squill. There's a lot of that in Goldeneye. Yeah, but you know, it, it got, James Bond are goofy, goofier movies. This one was playing it straight, and it, I just didn't believe in the universe. But that's for a Red Sparrow uh, review, right. which will uh, happen. The spy, the spy complex. Yes, yes. Our <laughs> other podcasts. These, these podcasts are piling up. we got to start recording some stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, no, uh, I, she, she's still soft, but she she wants to escape. She, I get a feel for her. I get an impression for her. I actually care for her. So do I. So do I. I, I more generally than I, like her, but more than I did for for uh, Tiffany Case. Tiffany Case at at the end, the book starts and she's oh yeah, um, Bun and her are not together, and she went. Uh, home and married another a GI or something. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, good. Well, as I recall, I haven't re-listened to the episode in full, but as I recall, um, I think you were the one that said, and I probably just agreed, like a like a puppet, that there's no way that a man like James Bond and a woman like Tiffany Case would have a long-lasting relationship. Yes. So the revelation at the start, well, no, not at the start of the book, halfway through from Russia would love the book, that they only lasted a couple of months, they got into a couple of quarrels, I think, 
you know, bless her heart, Tiffany Case, she had quite an arduous journey in Diamonds Are Forever. I wish her the best. I'm, I'm glad, in my heart of hearts, I'm glad she found happiness. She found someone that she might have a long lasting relationship, relationship with. I'm not particularly distraught that it's not with James Bond. So. Yes, no. Um, good luck. Good um, luck. We salute thee. But no, T Tatiana, um, she, she needs help. So, but she's not. Where, uh, you know, where where Solitaire is in a bad situation, um, Mr. Big's entire focus is not on her, on, and she's not part of the plot. She's a cog in a machine. Um, Tatiana is just a part of a plan. She's she's a tool. She's just a part. I mean, they're going to kill her. Like yes. Red Grant admits that he's going to kill her. He doesn't care why. He doesn't even. He he does not know why, nor does he care. He's just he's told he's got to kill her. So she's nothing but a pawn on a chessboard. Yes. Um. So yeah, I I I feel more empathy towards her than I did. She is a little bit of a dental in distress, but she is in a worse situation, and she's she, she's. When you well, when the government is planning to use you, kill you, and be done with you, uh, it's hard not to feel like a little bit empathy for. Her. I think in I don't know if she says it verbally or if, she, or if she just thinks it, and it's Fleming describing the thought process again. But she's also like a little bit tempted by getting out of Russia. You know, the food, the clothes. There's like there's an excitement there. She yeah. spent her obviously. She spent her whole life. I can't remember if it's Moscow or whatever, but she spent her so whole life in the Soviet Union. Now there's this opportunity to see something else, maybe be a little bit more free. And you mentioned the term Danzel in distress, and, and you're not wrong, but it still got to me. I still felt something for her, like in the moment in the train where she starts thinking, oh no, he just wants the lector, like he doesn't really care about me. I'm like, Girl, don't worry, man. We're here for you. We're reading. We're with you on the train. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, girl. And you know, Bond says, oh, God, "I got it." You know, don't worry. You know, there will be a time where my my people are going to question you. We're going to be apart for a while, but I'm going to try to reunite with you. I couldn't help it. I kind of felt a little something like, "Yeah, I hope this works out." We'll read Doctor No in a couple weeks, yeah. <laughs> but because we go book by book, we don't pay attention to what happens next. I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of want this to work out. I kind of want this to work out for them. So is she the best defined leading lady? Maybe not. I think Galabrand is still our favorite. Yes. But I do like Tanya. I, girl, don't no, she, worry, girl. She, she, you, you, she, she, uh, she's a better version of... Um, of Solitaire. Of Solitaire. Yeah. Like a, a slightly I, more complete slightly more proactive version of solitaire yes and in a m much worse situation like a sol solitaire would have not been able to to go through what uh, yeah but mr big takes a long time for mr big to decide he's going to kill solitaire rosa kleb and ren grant are like okay let's, just, yeah, let's do it let's just off this bitch <laughs> let's talk about red grant some more because he's a werewolf he's a freaking werewolf yes he goes crazy he ha he gets the crazies when the full moon emerges <laughs> jesus oh my god the, the entire chapter where they describe his origin it is weird as hell like it's really weird there's no i love the fact i like it when whether it's fleming or any other author or, or a movie I love it when <laughs> I love it when we get an explanation for something that still doesn't tell us everything. What the hell is happening? A full moon and he gets the crazies. Okay, so he goes crazy when the full moon. What do you mean? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, the dude is insane. He's a former boxer. Yeah. He went. To, he went from the west to the east. It sounds like there was a. <laughs> I just remember there was a, a comedy in the 1990s. It's actually the last movie John Candy w was in, where you had these people that were uh, in a western town, and they and they're like, you know what? We're tired of being in the, in, in the west. We're going back east, and they they unpack and they start going going back to civil, civilization. And it's just it's absurd that like that this character is absurd that he went. You know what? I'd rather work for the commies just to kill people. I enjoy mm. killing.
killing people. There's a, uh, I might have the upper hand here, because I actually very, very quickly leafed through a couple of pages in, in the last couple of days, and, and there is a passage that, that hit me, and and it's during Red Grant's plane ride on, he's going to meet the uh, higher-ups of Smirsh, and he's looking, thinking back on his life. And there's a passage that says, uh, yeah, he just liked the uh, how the Soviets have uh, total disregard for life. <laughs> that attracted him. It's like, whoa, okay, buddy. You're, dude, you're you're like, oh, you're you're a strange one. Um, you know what? We talked about uh, the Bond girl, the the villains. Uh, before we start talking about Bond, there's another character, one of the characters I enjoyed the most, but with weird origins. The legendary Karim Bey. Oh, Karim Darko in this book. Yeah, Darko. For, 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 I, I keep saying, but yeah, it's yeah, true. Right. My man. Darko Bey. Everybody loves Karim Bey. Yeah. Um, I like Karim Bey. Nope, we gotta say that for the movie. Karim, we'll just call him Karim because I. Call him Karim. Uh, I, I like him a lot too. His origins are quite intriguing. He He's actually half English in, in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, his mother was yes. English. Uh, but he's. I don't remember if he's never set. He certainly never worked for MI6 in England. He's always worked for MI6 in in Istanbul. I don't remember if he's actually never been to England. Never been. Never been to England. Doesn't want to go to England. No, he doesn't want <laughs> he's to. Perfectly happy in Istanbul, which is a rough town, as we find out very quickly. Huge man, huge man. He's bigger and taller than Bond. Yes, and Bond's like not a petite guy. <laughs> Bond is six and buff. Yeah. You know, Fit. pay no attention to the eggs and the bacon and the yogurt and the cigarettes. He is in tip-top shape, James Bond. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. No exception. But Dark was even bigger and, and taller than, than Bond, which is impressive. Very boisterous, um, very lively. Kind of like in the movie, ah, come, my friend, come in. Yes. Uh, and Warm. Very wa Yes, he's very warm. But at the same time, understands the dangers of, of, of the job and will kill if he needs to kill. In fact, there's even a section where he, he makes the very concrete decision. Yeah, I'm going to kill this mother effer. Uh, what's the? Krilenko. Krilenko. Krilenko, yes. Going to kill Krilenko, uh, who had been trying to kill him. I, I do like Karim Darko quite a bit. He's a lot of fun. And it takes very little time for Bond to start liking him. I don't know if that's what encouraged me to like Karim so quickly as well. Maybe, because I'm always on Bond's side anyway. What, what, whatever Jim does, I'm going to do too. Uh, but I got to agree, Karim Darko is a lot of fun. He's very boisterous, very happy. Not a devil may care. There's a devil may care sort of attitude to him, which I like a lot. No, he's um, warm. He's, he has an appetite for life. And I think mm -hmm. he, he says that at some point, like, he wants his tombstone said, he, di he died of living too much. Yes, like, yes. You, that, that encapsulates his philosophy beautifully. <laughs> you can't help but love the character. Even if he has... There's a chapter where they describe, I think, where he met his first wife. Or actually had uh, a woman that he tied to his chair for, like, weeks. Uh, she was naked. She, he basically, like... Uh, yeah. And when his mother shows up <laughs> and wants to help her, she don't want to leave. Yeah. She wants to stick around, which also says a lot, not about, not only about Karim, but just this whole culture they're living in in Istanbul. At the time, I'm sure Istanbul is a fantastic place I've never been. But in, in this Fleming 1950s 007 version of Istanbul, it is messed up it is like ooh, but you can't you, can, you know what even with that because i was a little bit creeped out but but you can't help but like the guy he's just too charming it's very very My black humor it's very dark humor but it is kind of funny at the same time <laughs> i was chuckling as i was going half of me was chuckling the other half was like this is retarded <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> you know dark uh yeah I, you probably saw uh, in my notes i have a calendar um, because he mentions that he leaves on August 14th, which is a Friday 13th. And the only date, uh, the, only, the only time on August 14th in, in Fleming's time that uh, happened, that, that, well, it couldn't only have happened in 1954. But Fleming makes a lot of references to things that happened after 1954. 
Like there's movie like that's my OCD side because I'm like okay I I Google the the candidates I'm like okay so it makes sense but I think he makes a reference to a, a political event I think one of the uh, people that um, escaped the, the the Russia the Russians um, happened after that date and there's a movie with Ma- Marion Monroe I think it's it like oh the, uh, Niagara I think the timeline very good movie by the way. <laughs> seen it actually really yeah. i wanted to see it so awesome. i said she's like, and marilyn monroe in it literally fantastic yeah i heard Absolutely that great. too i heard i heard good things about that movie um either, there's a lot of things that they mentioned i'm like okay that it, the timeline's messed up even they mentioned that bun um started working for the uh british secret service in 1938 yeah i remember that that struck me as odd yeah the the timeline is fudged up but i think it's by design i think he wanted You didn't want to set in a particularly straight time. I, I think he wanted things to be a little bit mo- movable. So I still had to bring it up because I, it's my OCD side. Um, I'm sure the listeners are, are well aware of that side. Every time, in every <laughs> single episode, except maybe one that I can think of where you brought up Notes. I'm sure the listeners. Are, of course, Matthew's the one bringing the note back. <laughs> well, Ed, Edgar doesn't do this because <laughs> it, it, it can't have happened in 1957, and I don't think there's been an August Friday the 13th uh, um, after f- well, uh, before Fleming died, so that's impossible. Ooh, ooh, the 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 way he makes his coffee. I want to buy one of those, but and it's called a Chem a Chemex um, coffee uh, pour over coffee. It's a, basically a glass jar. You put a filter in it and you drop the coffee. It's basically... Almost it, like how you would make tea. Kind of like... Yeah, ex- exactly, actually. But the thing is that I'm very um, rough with my possessions. And I've... <laughs> I've dest- Explain yourself. I've destroyed, I think, in the past year, three or four French presses. Oh, those possessions. Yes. Oh, okay, friend. I thought you were going all Karim Darko on me. All of a no, 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 no. I, I destroyed so many French press. I bought. Well, you saw mine. It's 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 in aluminum now. It no, mm. will never break. But I'm not a, have bad coffee, by the way. Thank you. Welcome. I enjoy my coffee. I take my coffee seriously. But I want to try that. Eventually, I'll buy one. But I'm afraid I'm going to break it. And it's quite expensive. It's like sixty. I've seen sixty dollars for. Uh, also, they make a reference to. Uh, so many things. The Cambridge uh, spy ring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that that General G. Smirsch um, chapter, I feel, is the one that makes the reference to the most yes. material. I'm sort of I'm leaning on that chapter, but I'm also leaning half on you because you're you're the research man here. So, I, but I feel that's the chapter that uh, where most uh, potentially realistic uh, factoids sprout yes. from Fleming's mouth. They, they, there's a lot of. Uh, Data. Even the book starts with th- this older author's note that says uh, everything like that's described. Yeah, I noticed that. I read it too. And I, I googled a little bit of it, and it, it, the, there, there's a building for the secret service in Russia, but it's the, the address he gives is not actually accurate. He gives, but but are you looking at the 2018 address no, no, or the 1957 no, address? 1957. Oh, actually, the building that used to be the headquarters for Smirsch was uh, before. The Russian Revolution, according to my notes, it was an um, uh, insurance company <laughs> building. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> After the revolution, boop, 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 well, it's, it, it, it's a sort of jail. I think it's still a home to the Russian Secret Service, uh, even to this day. KGB. KGB. Oh, the hotel, the... The, uh, the, uh, the Ritz? Is, No, he doesn't go to the Ritz. He goes to at the, the end, he, Christ, at the end. But when he goes to his oh yes, of course. Oh, what's the, what's that place called? Crystal uh, Palace. <laughs> but it's actually based on a real place. And let me show you. It, they recently renovated to make it look more more like it. It, it looked like that today. Right. It's called. No, no, they did. They did renovations yeah. to make it. No, but I, this is because I don't remember this being Fleming's description. Apparently, it's like well. Whatever. Well, it probably was dustier in 1950. Like, mm. But it's uh, at one point they show the uh, the view from the hotel and it's a the real name is Paris uh, Palace Hotel and it's quite beautiful. It's very Victorian age, um, Victorian era. Uh, very nice. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's beautiful. Like I want to go to Istanbul. I was like the entire book. I was like googling. Oh, yeah. I want to go there. 
I have a friend, a good friend actually. It's a few years ago, but he went to Istanbul and he came back with very, very positive comments. He liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, it's a shame that the Orient Express doesn't go from uh, from Istanbul to Paris. To, to Paris. <laughs> It's still, there's a version of it, like technically it closed in the 1970s, but uh, private investors, they sort of bought the brand and they run their own train. That's and, nice. But I'm like... See, that's know, a nostalgia kick I can get behind. Yeah, me too. I mean, of course, yeah, eventually I'll get there, but uh, no, seriously, I'm like, mm, quite fascinating. Um, yeah, pictures. The it's, Bosphorus. It, it, it just... It looks like a beautiful, yeah. beautiful place. The Galata oh, Bridge. Just the, the mosques in Istanbul alone would be mm. worth visiting. I mean, like the uh, the Spice Bazaar. The Spice Bazaar. I was curious. Is that the same place as in uh, Skyfall, the beginning? I didn't think of that, but maybe. I'm I'm not entirely certain. No, oh, I mean, look. honestly, how long he rides the motorcycle through it in like five seconds? Five seconds. <laughs> but they <laughs> shot in Istanbul. Yeah, they so. did. They did. I mean, he come, he goes. Even the world's not enough. They shot there. Remember the uh, yeah. Well, it's true. The climax happens. In, Bond is in Istanbul a lot. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's a nervous. Uh, it's well, it's a place where east meets west. So mm. it's still uh, even to this day. I think it's still. Uh, well, there was a lot of controversy a few years ago when Turkey wanted to become a member of the EU. The debate was: Well, are, are Turks European or are they sort of Arab slash Asian? And like nobody could agree on that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's Turkey's always been. Like you just you took the words right out of my mouth. It's where east meets west. So yeah. it's, a, it's a fascinating place. Um, so they well, well back to Bond. Bond. Bond is bored. We've beginning. not really talked about James Bond, and we've been going for forty five minutes. minutes. <laughs> we're just we're doing like the 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 the, the book itself. We're doing a great job, I think. <laughs> um, so he's bored. He's really bored at the beginning of the book, and he's just training and. Uh, doing exercise, we meet is um, is made is um, for the first time. Yes. we've not met her before. May, May, yeah, so, uh, Scottish. Scottish, Scottish. So she's a fun character, but I can see why they never used her for the movie. They could have used her for Skyfall, actually, and uh, not use Kincaid. They didn't use the <laughs> nice old Scottish lady. Yeah, like a burly uh, type. Welcome to Scotland, and she blows the. <laughs> Yeah, double, I, double barrel shotgun that guy now that you mention it oh could have been interesting no nope, that would have been better yeah well i'm a big uh who's the actor who plays kincaid can't remember oh jesus great actor i like him a lot though he's in uh big fish but i i, for, I forget i forget he's um, also like the 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 head honcho pulling the strings in the born movies yes yeah. yes yeah. yes we don't see him until like ultimatum i think yeah like the the guy who Messed uh, Matt Damon's brain, mm. but uh, no, we don't see uh, May in the films, but we do get her in a few of the books. She actually shows up in, in, the, in a continuation novel I read, one of the continuation novels. And uh, but I do like the fact that Bond is bored, which again, book by book, Fleming drops these little hints about who this man is. And what I there are a couple of things I like about James Bond in From Russia with Love. You mentioned one of them, the fact that he's bored because he hasn't been on a mission in a while. And he's also... Is it just me? Or is Bond a little bit more jokey in this one? A little bit more jokey. Yeah. No, he's, uh... I feel like he's becoming a human being by no, From Russia With Love. Yeah, he's... You know... I, I... Cause it's a gonna be, little bit. It's gonna very be, subtle. It's going to be hard not to... And, so far, we fail miserably not comparing the books and the movie. The book and the movie for this one, this one is so close. It's yeah. sometimes my brain, like I don't know which one's which. But there's a moment in uh, both the movie and the book where uh, after Karen B gets murdered by, by Grant, uh, Bond has a different reaction that Sean Connery has. Sean Connery is angry and he beats on, <laughs> he slaps uh, Tatiana a little bit. Book Bond doesn't have this reaction. No, very cold. The, the, bond, the bond of the book, I can't remember what the exact line at the end of the chapter is, but he doesn't say anything and his brain just starts working. What's the next step? What do we have to do to get out of here? That's how the bond of the book reacts. Yeah, the Whereas bond, the bond of the movie is much more emotional. More, <laughs> well, it's at least the Connery version. Yeah, well, Con, sure, right. Because I, 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 you know, to mention, yeah, I could see Daniel Craig playing 
the scene differently, but you know, who knows? Uh, no, it's a different reaction, and he's like, "Tell me what you know and help me." And he's he's looking for assistance. He's he's not macho macho. He's he's actually scared when he's he has to fight uh, Red Grant. Uh, he's like, "If I fight him, I'm I'm gonna lose. There's no way I can beat this man. I have to like knock him in one one strike." Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 and he does, and it's it, it is a great moment in the book and in the movie for different reasons. In yeah, the book. It's uh, the, the entire. It's intense. It's really intense, actually. No, it's uh, you're like, how is he gonna get out this out of this? And one? Grant keeps reminding him we're approaching the tunnel. I want to say old man, but he doesn't say it in the book. He, no, we're no, he say it. Does he book. say old man? He says it in the book, and eventually, when he has Bond on his oh, knees, that's true. He, he does say it in the book. He, he, he's like, okay, no, my brain is. They're, well, they're so close. It's hard. It's hard to. Um, uh, he's uh, yeah, because eventually he's like, uh, can you stop calling me uh, old man? He's trying to think of a way of stopping him from calling him old man, and when he tries, like he keeps. Calling you even more old He's men. trying old to men. unnerve Red Grant to varying degrees of success. Um, but I do love the tete a tete in the Orient Express where Red Grant has Bond at, at gunpoint. Uh, it's extremely tense. I, I, there haven't been, I mean, what you got the, th the Thunderballs being racked in Casino Royale, maybe the final hand in Casino Royale. Uh, the finger snapping in Live and Let Die. Um, but I haven't felt this tense uh, since we've started reading the books. Yeah, I no. Seen. Yeah, it is. You're, you're entirely... Well, it's one of the best scenes so far. Probably, honestly, probably in the entire canon, it's probably the most intense. That's probably one of the better scenes uh, in the entire canon from memory. Like The, 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 the other books we haven't gone through, they're... My memory from of them is hazy. Uh, Doctor No is almost I barely remember anything from Doctor No. I just remember it has a lot to do with shit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the same. For we'll me. get there when we get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do like how Bond escapes his predicament. Once they get into the tunnel, he's he's on his. I think he's on his knees, and there's the book. Uh, which actually had a, a gun in it. Another thing we got to talk about, gadgets in this book. Yes. Like real gadgets on both sides. As, but once they get into the tunnel, he very quickly puts the book over his heart, I guess. And although it still really, really, really hurts, it does save his life and he gets the upper hand. He, or he, he plays dead. And then he surprises uh, Red Grant by taking, I think, the knife out of his gadget-laden suitcase and he stabs Red Grant. They, they tussle for a couple paragraphs. Yeah, well... Yeah, and yeah, it's uh, it's a messy fight. Yeah, really messy, like violent, guy, very violent. It's, it's short. It's not as brutal or macho as the film version, but it, 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 it you're gonna have like to be careful where you step after because there's a lot of blood, a yeah. lot of blood. Yeah. Oh, Fleming never shied away from from describing the the blood gushing and oh, and, no. and the the viscera of the physical confrontations in the books. He I don't know if I'd say he relished in it, but he was damn good at describing it. Violence has a cost in the Bond movies, uh, Bond books, that in the Bond novels. The Bond, uh, okay, I'll start over. Violence has a cost in the Bond books, not in the Bond movies. Or less. So. Less. Less. I won't say. Dep dozen, depends but. on which era, but. <laughs> depends who's playing Bond. It's yeah. Well, at this era, I mean, the most. Uh, he's going to have his hair messed up. Like, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the book. Blood is spilled. Even Bond doesn't like he's bruised and shaken by the by the ordeal. Well, Red Grant is uh, he's a beast. It's he's a, a beast. He's uh, he he's like those Pacific Rim, <laughs> those Pacific Rim robots. It's like fight against that. Okay, um, um, I'm, I'm stab it, stab it. Yeah. Um, so they uh, they finally make it out. They um, this this they decide to go to well actually when um, Grant as Bond in his crosshairs and he's explaining to him. And one thing we forgot to mention: they filmed them uh, having sex. And Bond's reaction when they, he finds out that he has a sex tape is he's like like he's humiliated, is embarrassed, and he's just oh. 
disgusting. He's, Only he's, the Russians would come up with that. Yeah, he's, he's a bit grossed out. It's just like, and they he, he still do these type of honeypots. Even a couple of years ago, one of Putin's uh, uh, rivals, they, they, they filmed them uh, having an affair and they used that as blackmailing to you. You imagine, imagine they, they make, imagine From Russia With Love is not a Connery film. It's a Roger Moore film. And we get to that scene. Can you imagine that, old man? We've been filming you fornicating with Tanya. I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like that. I will, I will forever love the version in the book and the version in the film, but I also like the version in my head. Yeah, the like parallel version. version. You recast... Um... I hope you were satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Um, oh, I hope you didn't miss the climax. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, it, I I do appreciate Bond's reaction in, in the book. It uh, again these little nuggets into Bond's psyche. A guy who likes women so much, but the thought of him being filmed actually having sex with a woman, which, which I get, it's it's espionage, it's voyeurism, which and voyeurism is is not a nice thing to do. It's very impolite. It's very naughty. So I guess there's certain, I mean, there's certain things even James Bond, who's a bit of a bastard, even he would not dare engage in, and that they, it's an affront to his to his being, I guess so. It is disturbing, silly. Mm. You know, we haven't talked about the gypsy camp scene. There is a gypsy camp scene in, in this book. The gypsy camp. And unlike in the film, there's kind of a purpose why they go to the gypsy camp. I think Kerim thinks that Vavra is the guy's name, the head of the gypsy camp, Vavra. Because of his contacts, he the gypsies might know why the Russians are trying to kill Karim. Whereas in the film, it's not like really clear why they go to the gypsy camp. Um, because the Russians, they want to kill Karim, I think, before Bond gets to him. Because they make uh, the, a couple of assassination attempts on him before Bond gets to him. And they failed. And they, they Yes, keep... there's a hole in the wall of Karim's office when Bond arrives. He think, ah, oh, there's a bit of a draft. That's there's in the movies. Uh, that attempt with the bomb. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We see the attempt. We see it happen in the film, whereas in the book, it's happened literally just as like Bond is arriving. You know, and they they're they're reconstructing the wall there. Yeah. Um. So there are these attempts on Karim's life, and he, he thinks the gypsy because of his contacts, uh, in with um, uh, with the gypsies. Pardon me. They spend a, a Saturday night. What? Hell was Saturday night to spend, and so, we do get a fight between <laughs> two women. A good fight too, by the way. Yeah, no, damn good, good fight. Good fight. The the bodies are glistening. They take their tops off. Yes, that's true. The naked yeah. the bodies are glistening, and they're they're fit. Mm -hmm. You know, this is hot. This is hot. Can, can I go see? Uh, <clears throat> no, I feel like a pervert. Uh, it's in the book, but okay. Time, every time we've reviewed the book, we've showered praise on Fleming's abilities to describe. We are doing no more, no less this time, yeah, Matthew. That's right, all we're doing. He's just really good at describing fit, naked, glistening <laughs> female bodies that are fighting for a man. That's yes. all we're doing. He's yes. just, Fleming's just doing a good job at that. You might even say he's doing a bang up job. <laughs> Uh, no, but it's a fun scene. They're fighting for the uh, well for Vavra's son because they want so. to both marry him. They've sent him away, and they'll fight to the death. And whoever the winner is, I think if one doesn't, what happens if one doesn't kill the other? I think they're that I don't remember excommunicated or something like that. Something like that. I, at the end, like Bond has to make a decision, and unlike in the movie where he's like, "Meh, I love them." Uh, he says, you know what, uh, let them live, uh, pick one, and you're going to need the one because uh, a lot of people just died, uh, um, just so you're going to need more sons. So uh, she's useful, so let's not kill people for nothing, and if people have died. Such like an economical way of handling this. I get it, but it's like, well, you're going to need to make more babies because a lot of people have died, so hey. don't get rid of one of them. It's, it's peace through. Uh, I mean, look at her, she's naked and fit and glistening does nobody want to make babies with this one <laughs> anyone anyone wants to make babies um no it, it is um it's a good section of the book 
Uh, there's uh, also the uh, the attempt on well, not the attempt, the murder of Kirenku. But I don't know. I I, I felt because Kirenku, he's running when he's being <laughs> killed. He's like, running like a he dies run. like a punk. He dies like a chump, like being shot from. He's he's escaping through the poster of Niagara, the movie. But yeah. you know, and I noticed this throughout the movie. There's references to books movies stories of a f- movie like this um, um, if i remember niagara from the synopsis it's a movie about an affair that goes wrong there's a lot of things like that throughout the movie so it kind of there's it's a texture th- th- mm. like i'd love the plot of from Russia love tends to be tends to mirror these pop culture or actual newsworthy Events that Fleming is, is referencing. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I did not pick up on that. Did not pick up. On there's that. a lot of art reference uh, that I've been noticing since uh, we've been reading this bo- these books, uh, especially in Moonraker. Uh, the way he describes, I, 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 I'd be interested to uh, if somebody wrote a book on Fleming and the influence of art uh, mm-hmm. on on his prose, because there's a lot of the guy was uh, not. Uh, an imbecile like he had oh, cult, sure. he had a lot of culture like he had a, apparently a massive book collection uh and it shows like oh, to know how to write you got to know yes. how to, uh, you got to read a lot but he was also a fan of movies cuz uh, that, that that reference to that uh, Marin Monroe movie well you, i think you just said why he was probably a fan of that movie yeah yes you're right <laughs> dumb dumb asking the question is also answering, answering it. the question yeah <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, we have the, the entire well, Istanbul. Uh, you know, it's very travel loggy. Like, You've been saying that a lot recently. It's it's not a negative though. It 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 is. I mean, he goes to the the Hall of Pillars when they they when they go through the um, the the um, the underground the underground the uh, reservoir, mm. and that's the thing you can still visit to this day. It that's just, cool. I'd love to see that. I, I want to go. See, I want to go there, man. Talk, talking about, you know, our any fans' desire and fantasy to 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 live a Bond moment, uh, to experience what it would be to be James Bond in a particular moment of a book or a film. That is definitely one of them. Great book, great film, and you can actually do it in real life. You know. And that's the view from the hotel. Like you can barely see, but if you saw the original colors, it's just gold and everywhere. It's called the Golden, golden Horn. Horn. Yeah. So yeah, that the entire time he's visiting Istanbul, and I'm just like, wow, this is so beautiful. It's just the uh, eventually they make a reference to the uh, the Hippodrome Square, and it's it used to be um, a big. Uh, hippodrome like a, yeah but, almost like a coliseum type of um uh, but it it's actually exist. it's more like uh, the type of um the type of location where the ben hur race takes place yeah. exactly that's before and that's today there's two pillars and barely nothing Ooh. i mean it looks nice but i would have liked to have seen that the other yeah. yeah the original uh, and that's the uh, poster that they reference that uh, Kirianku makes his escape through. I've always been again, I, like I was saying earlier, I've I've seen the film and I've seen that poster before. I think that's beautiful. You have Marilyn relaxing, looking very voluptuous. It's called Niagara, and the lower part of the poster is the waterfall, but the waterfall is actually starting over Marilyn's body. I think that's a really nice poster. That's a beautiful poster. Um, so yeah, we we think we. I mean, the Orient Express. The Orient Express is something of a... It's a legend. Like, it stopped in 1977. That's when they actually stopped. So, in the the movie takes place in 63. Yeah. The book is uh, 50... Well, we're saying... We're going to assume it's 57. If the, even the timeline's a little wonky, but... A little wonky. Well, we're going to apply the, uh, the date of the book. Um... It's on its way down. It's not as popular as it used to be. People are flying. When when uh, Tatiana proposes using because she 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 decides she well, she's the one that actually it's opts part of for their, that. Bond is the one that says no. What are you talking about? Let's take the plane or whatnot. We'll be we'll be home in forty five minutes <laughs> basically. No, it, it, she's the one that that forces him to use because it's part of their plan. Because their plan is to like trap him and you know it's funny. I... I just thought of a potential criticism, and I hate the fact that I'm doing this because I love this book so much. But 
I find it's a little odd that they seem to be well aware that this could be a trap. This is way too good to be true. It's been way too easy so far. And Bond keeps saying, why would I panic? Why, why would I panic? Because it's been too easy so far. <laughs> Take the plane. <laughs> That's oh. a little... For as thorough and efficient as James Bond is, eh, whatevs. I like, think what? He, <laughs> he gets lulled into a failed sense of uh, security because he's also enjoying his time. Like, he's enjoying being with Tatiana. He's, he is enjoying being with Tatiana. He's enjoying... He, he enjoys uh, Ta yeah. Tanya's company. He enjoys Kerem's uh, company. He's on vacation in this book, most of it. Kind of. Kind of. He's having a grand old time. Having... see a gypsy fight? <laughs> gypsy fight. A little bit of uh, tourism. A little bit of pop-pop in the hotel room. Uh, you know, I, I mean, sure, I, I, see what you, I see your point. It's just... Because he says that more than once. Why would I panic? Why would I panic? Because... The fact that you're asking why you should panic means you should panic and get on that mother effing plane. <laughs> but she doesn't want to. She 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 will leave if he does. Mm. She's threatening. Of course, him. if they get on the plane, we don't get that beautiful Orient Express sequence. So good for you, Bond. Make the dumb decision. We need this story to continue. <laughs> also, another th thing I remember about Karen Bay, he put a bomb under the uh, uh, Russian consulate. <laughs> yes. And he's, he tells, Bond sees it when they, they're spying on them. It's like, yeah, uh, if, if I die or if anything happens to me or if war is declared, we're going to blow them up. Yeah. And it's only after, after he's been murdered and one of his sons finds out that um, his dad passed when was murdered. Um, when uh, uh, Grant has Bond in his uh, crosshairs, um, Grant says, ah, it's probably your friends there that blew the consulate uh, it's a very and Bond is like, yeah, I hope plenty of them died. He's like, yeah, revenge. I know it's a very uh, what's the like zero sum game. Like if if they get me, well, I'm taking as of, as many of them as I can if I'm dead. So here's that bomb, and they they blow it up very shortly after Karen's yes. death. So I was like, I, 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 it's not it's a detail that's not in the in the movie, and I was like, good revenge. Yeah, well, the consulate does blow up in the film, but it's... Not the same way. No, it's not for the same purpose, and I don't think the idea is to murder dozens and dozens of Russian yeah. people. Uh, whereas in the book, it's like... Pure revenge. kill these people. You know? <laughs> um, so we... Um, what else do we have to discuss? I mean, the, uh, Well, the final chapter. We haven't really talked about the final chapter. I know, I know, but I'm just looking. Look at, look at it. That's the, that's the, those are the prices to uh, for for the um, uh, um, modern version of the Orient Express. Ooh, these still are in, expensive. Uh, yeah, it's pretty expensive. Well, I mean, it's a long. Well, where is it from? For Verona to Paris, Venice to Paris, Verona to London. Yeah, it's like two thousand. Those aren't Canadian dollars. Yeah, those are pounds. I can't make. 2,450 for, uh, well, that was for March 24th to 25th, but that they, they were sold out. So people are still able to pay. It's a luxury. I mean, let me be honest, it's a luxury. You hear the word Orient Express. If you know anything about trains, and I don't even know that much about trains, and I know about the Orient Express. Like, yeah. Everybody knows about it. It's legendary. Yeah, the, the final chapter, uh, let's go through it, I guess. Um, find our old friend, uh, uh, What's his name again? <laughs> JB? No, the other one, the French one. Oh, Mathis. Mathis is back. Yeah, that's so. true. That's kind of... I, I do like the cameo. Because yeah. we haven't seen him since Casino. No, he's been mentioned, I think, in Moonraker in, in passing. Mm. There's like a brief reference to him. Uh, so he's back for literally the last chapter. They uh, Still very happy-go-lucky. Still very, very positive-minded. Like, yeah, it's very... Um, experience and a little bit he's now the he's now the chef du deuxième bureau yeah which he was not i don't think in casino royale no i don't think he was just he's about bond's age like he's uh and he's the and he's the chef that's kind of interesting <laughs> but anyways because he's competent i guess yeah uh so they bond found out that uh grant was supposed to meet club at the, the ritz hotel in paris and yeah, I'm not going to go through my notes because he mentions the street and the street that he mentions. And you did three pages of research on the street and what the door looks like and what what the catering service is like yeah. and how they how they brew their coffee. It's not the, the street; it doesn't go next to the hotel. Exactly. Oh, it anyway, uh, no, it doesn't. Oh. Um, 
I got the plan. I'll show it. I'll, I'll show it to you if you want. But he um, takes <laughs> it takes Grant's room with the help of the uh, deuxième bureau, and they are. See, that's the Rue Carbon, and that's the Ritz Hotel. Okay. Actually, um, Harry's Bar, which Fleming used to visit, it's, it's at the Ritz Hotel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. I, I I like the part in this chapter where Bond enters the room and. Well, Rosa Klebb, everybody knows it's Rosa Klebb, although there's a little bit of doubt in Bond's mind because it's just a nice little old lady who's knitting, I believe. She's knitting something, and I go, who are you? <laughs> yeah. You must be mistaken. And Bond is like, am I in the wrong room? Did we screw this up somehow? <laughs> he doubts himself for a second. But then he stands firm. You are Rosa Klebb, and I'm coming to get you, sucker. And that's where the fun begins. She's, at first, she tries and uses her, all their poison or ne needles because he's noticed there's something strange about the the phone. Yeah, there's a gun in the phone. There's a gun in the phone. Isn't there a gun in the phone? Something explodes. It's like in the book. Well, what's yeah. what's up with the phone? He notices something about the phone. Mm -hmm. Damn it! I don't have my book with me. But, but uh, something weird about the phone. Because he, he has to duck. I think she no. She she try. They they there there's there's a standoff and she's looking at him and she tries to stab him with the needles and he yeah. and he avoids it. He notices they're poison tipped probably because yes. there's something funny about the coloration at the uh, at the at the front, at the sharp at the pointy yeah. end of the of the needle. They're, they're kind of white or something, and he vo he avoids getting stabbed. Uh, I think, and then this is where the, the the movie and the book kind of merge in my brain because <laughs> I, I think he uses a chair. For to, he to, does. He does. He does. I can because he does in the movie too. Yeah, but he does in the book. I remember he does. He and he pins her against the wall, and that's when Ma Mattis and the rest of the boys show up. Right. He doesn't kill her. They they want to arrest her. That's the plan is to arrest her, and oh, Mathis and his boys I, show up. I think he has the perfect like line that I I, I love this line when she gets captured. He um he says that like when they're gonna be we're gonna you're gonna be done with you. We're gonna. Uh, that's, oh, the deuxième will be there in a minute. In, in an hour or so, you'll be in London. You won't even you won't be seen leaving the hotel. You won't be seen going to in, into England. In fact, very few people will see you again from now on. You're just a number on a secret file. By the time we finish with you, you'll be ready for the lunatic asylum. I'm like, that's damn. That, that is a threat. You're gonna be so messed up from the torture and the interrogation. We're gonna go put put you through. You're gonna be like. Looney Bean, Looney Bean Club. She's already, I wonder if, I mean, we never see uh, Dear Rosa again in the books, but I'm wondering, since she's already a little bit loony herself, I'm wondering if her, she's too loony for them. And they never, they never sent her the, uh, I like to think that she's, she's so crazy that they can't out crazy her crazy. She's behind bars somewhere. I know what happened to her. I, that's one thing I remember from Dr. No. Oh, like the, uh, she's dead. Oh, she, she's okay. dead, but like I think she, she mentioned she had a heart attack. That's dumb. Well, it's you know if you, it, continuation novel, she's not dead. You no? could no, but I mean you you could bring her back. I mean just say that's that's a lie that Bond was told that she's actually secretly in a an institution. Like if you know people can like there's a you know if you want to read more Bond. You, I, I, I don't think it's something, it's so sacred that, you know, it's like, uh, if you want to stop with the Fleming canon, you can. Those other books don't mean anything. And for good reason, they're not re written by the original author. But if you want more Bond and if they're good, you know what? Who cares? Mm. Just enjoy the ride. But no, if uh, I, there's a lot of characters in... Well, I think we're at that part of the book where we discuss the leftovers now. <laughs> Probably, because there's a lot of characters that make it in the movie, make it in, uh, but don't make it in uh, any other book. We mentioned General G. That's something, you know. The entire time, because in the movie, this is where it's gonna. We're, we're, there's gonna be a lot of crossover between the book and the movie, both episodes. We, they replace General G with Belofeld. Pretty much, yeah. And there's a lot. Of, I've never liked any of the movie Blumfeld. There's ones I enjoy more than others, and I'm like, you know, if you're gonna make a, make his identity a secret, why not it be a Russian general that's secretly working with Western agent? 
Uh, I think the reason for that, I, I feel like I've read this somewhere, is because the filmmaker specifically did not want to get too yeah, political. You're right. But it, it's better than b- being like James Bond's t- brother. Excuse me, half brother. Oh, sorry. But th- th- that's a character they could recycle in the movie, basically. Oh, absolutely. Like absolutely. I'd love to. I, I, we only get him for a couple of chapters. But he makes an impression. He leaves a lasting impression. Very smart guy, very devious guy who's kind of enjoying himself in a weird way. He enjoys toying with the people he's working yes. with. I don't think he likes them very much, but well, he has the upper hand because he's has the most experience. He's the, has the most seniority, so he's toying with them a little bit. Goggle is similar in the the movie, but he's uh, not as cruel and no, I mean, go, go. aggressive as this dude is. Take away the fact that he's head of the KGB. He's basically a friend he's an ally yeah there's spy one uh, no, for film you. fries only where he's kind of the villain but even then he laughs it off at the end yeah <laughs> he's like eh. <laughs> whatevs I'm, I'm going back home you know like he's like, not pre- like intentionally evil he's just like meh I'm, 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 I'm a patriot basically I'm working for the Russians so I do my business but I'm gonna enjoy life and, uh, and well, I'm at it and Kronstein Kronstein I Kind of dug Krunstein because he's they mentioned his family and his wife. The idea of this man who's just like he's the evil, uh, what's the name of the Russian uh chess player? Uh, Kasparov, Kasparov. Yeah. he's the evil Kasparov, yeah, pretty much. He, Didn't so, he say something like, Well, if I had to show up to a smirsh meeting, I would sacrifice my wife and children? Didn't he say something like yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's incredibly like. Oh, he's Smart, cold-hearted. cold-hearted. He's all brain and no heart. He's in the movie. Brilliant like, brain, but no heart. No heart, no heart. Yeah. Like, I feel like they, they they barely touch on those characters. They have great descriptions. I'm like, oh, God, we can't bring... Well, they brought back... Uh, what's his name? Well, they brought back Blofeld. They brought back uh, Felix, Le- Felix Leiter with both arms and legs. You know what? It's a new universe. Bring him back. Bring Kronstein. Kronstein... 21st century version of Kronstein, even the Rosa Club. But Grant, Grant is... I, I like the movie version of Grant, but the book version, he's unstoppable for us. He's, uh, there is something about... Uh, I mean, in, in the film, they mention, oh, uh, lunatic, uh, superb material. And that's pretty much it. Whereas in the book... Man, Fleming milks everything he can out of out of Red Grant. We spend a lot of time at the start of the book with Red Grant. We get to know his backstory. He makes a three dimensional, well, to an extent, a three dimensional character, um, and it's it's a fascinating read. It's a fascinating character, a terrifying character, but a fascinating character nevertheless. And yeah, we don't really get that in the film. We, we get a, a wonderful performance from um, uh, from. Uh, we're gonna have to do IMDb the movie before we Robert Shaw Robert Shaw thank you very much got a wonderful performance from Robert Shaw but minus the backstory so and also his placement in the story and the way he's used um, I'm gonna refer again to the movie version but this time from another movie uh, he's a shark he's like the shark from Jaws because you see him in the beginning you you don't see him till the end he's always a constant Mm. Threat, because you know, in the movie, it's like oddly enough, it's the same. Well, not oddly, it's, it's the same thing. He's there at the beginning, and you see him constantly yeah. peeking from a window or uh, out on, on the, the making side. sure Bond stays alive. Yeah, and you're, I'm your guiding angel. Mm. Um, yeah, no, there's a there's elements they could recycle, uh, but. They used most of it for the movie. Pretty much. There's nothing. Not right. The leftovers are just little breadcrumbs. They're crumbs. They're tasty crumbs, but they're crumbs. They're, mm. There's not much left they can actually recycle in the book. Um, so we usually, I usually, well, I usually, I have what's happening in 1957. Let's do it. Um, so there's, I don't have that much. 1957. You don't have that much about that? N- uh, well, yeah. You know, I tr- I tried to stay with the team of the book, and there was nothing on trains or Russia. But culturally, 1957 was the year of Elvis Presley. Oh, Elvis Presley's born. No, no, he, no that's when born. he became super oh, popular. Okay. Now, Jan- January 6th, he appears uh, on for the third and final time on the Ed Sullivan Show. 
Um, I think later on uh, he buys a Graceland. I think later on the same year, um, yeah, he uh, Jailhouse Rock. Is, I think it's his first movie is released. So that's like that's the year of Elvis Presley, 1957. Um, love me tender, love me do, never let me go. When are we uh, starting a Kickstarter for your first album? We got Batman podcast, music podcast. Didn't we make one another one up? Uh, uh, spy podcast. Spy podcast. Yeah. Spy pod. Um, also, uh, Jimmy Alpha was arrested uh, for uh, bribery um, in 1957. Uh, Jack Kerouac's On the Road goes on sale on September, September 5th. Uh, and oh, a, a serial killer Ed Gein murders his last victim, Bernice Worden, on Plain, in, in, of Plainfield, Wisconsin. Murdered his last victim, so did uh, Red Grant. Yeah, and yeah, pretty much. And uh, the Sputnik program, uh, they launched their first, well, the first artificial satellite in, on October 4th of 1957, cool. which is, ignites the. the um, Space war, space, space race. Well, at least it's a little bit of positivity from the Russians. <laughs> we've, yes, we've been lambat. No, I, well, Fleming's been maltreated. Uh, been poking at the with uh, Russian. Let's, let's give him a little bit of respect. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, Bert's. We have March 29th. The Islander Christopher Lambert is born. There can only be one. Yeah, with the best uh, 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 Scottish accent. The best Scottish, French, American accent ever. <laughs> uh, Judge Reinald is also born on May 21st. John Lovitz, uh, July 21st. And that's a biggie here. August 18th. Uh, Bond girl Carol Bouquet is born. Nice. Um, Homer Simpson is born on October 29th. Dolph Lundgren, who oh, makes a cameo as uh, well a KGB agent in A View to a Kill. Bond alumni Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah, again. Um, sometimes I'm struggling with these ones, so I, sometimes I pick other ones. Uh, born in on November fourth, uh, November third. Sorry, November third. And Michael Clark Duncan, the late actor, um, who I would have cast as Mr. Mr. Big, Big yeah. uh, born on December tenth. Now, in, in my mind, he. He is. In some alternate universe, he played Mr. Big in, in, in a remake or reboot of Little Let Die. You know what? If, if not in the heaven, he's playing him right now. I, I'm sure he is. <laughs> I'm sure he's listening to this saying, hey, good idea, guys. And they're, they're filming right now. <laughs> good. Um, so final thoughts on the book? Excellent. Excellent. I, I have nary a complaint about this book. I love its structure. I love the characters. I love James Bond. I'm really, really starting to genuinely love the character of James Bond at this point, whereas he was a bit more of a blunt instrument during the first couple books. Now I, I feel like he's a human being. Um, the villains are great. Kerem Darko is great. I got a little bit of love for Tanya Khan, uh, despite uh, some of our criticisms. I love it. Is it my favorite? Isn't my fame. Am I gonna put it over Moonraker? Yes, I am. I like it more than Moonraker. Not by much. By a hair. Off the skin of my bum bum. <laughs> but I like it more than Moonraker. I can't uh, argue. I mean, it's per personal preference. I'm still gonna put Moonraker on top. Actually, you know what? I'm puzzled. Because it's not... Like, this book is great. As a Bond book, is it what you are? You know, Moonraker gave me what I want from a from a Bond movies, and I came from the Bond movies to the Bond book, so I, that's why I also recommend it. it. Has a great villain, but this one, you know what? This one's actually a, probably a, you know, it's a damn good spy novel. I would recommend it. It's a better thriller and spy novel than Moonraker. Moonraker is just like a great adventure, you know. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's it's really uh, is it just a great adventure in quotation marks. It's a it's a you know what's his name uh, John F. Kennedy uh, gave it a really like put it on his favorite book list, and that's why uh, it influenced the creation of Moon the movie franchise, and that's why they made this as the second movie because uh, the president yeah. when the, the president of the free world gives uh, it the thumbs up. You gotta make the movie. You gotta make the movie, and. 
it's a great spy like it's prob like it's a great spy novel it works like if if you want to just read a great spy story that has romance that has action murder mystery this one's this one's yeah. it if you want a bo- bomb book moonraker. I, moonraker moonraker so I'm a- but i'm a spy i like i like my bond when he's actually doing espionage yeah, no, which well, is what he's doing in this moonraker book. is a bit re- retarded so you know what i'm still struggling do i put it on top of moonraker or do i still put moonraker on top so i'm just gonna say red grant hugo drax klebs rosa kleb uh galabrand tatiana the train sequence uh, it's tough man oh man i, I whatever you choose let me tell you this as 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 your co-host and as fellow Bond aficionado, whatever you choose, you're not making the wrong choice. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. One last thing. I listen to the. I told you. I, I always listen to you the audio books. I only have a cup. I don't think I have for much wood love. Toby Stevens does the audiobook version. Really? He's. He must be good. Great. I. You know what? It sold. I'm gonna buy it. I. It breaks like it breaks my heart that he played Gustav Graves. He would have like it's the perfect like. I want them to make a Bond cartoons that he so well, just he so gives the voice to James Bond. Yes, just so he can voice it. Like and he's, apparently he's doing a there's a, a dramatization they're doing of Moonraker that's coming out this weekend of some really? sort. Really, I think the they do that around Easter time. Once every couple of years, at around this time of year, they do. And that. he's done. I, I think he's from the the Bond actor. He's the one that has done the most, the, the alumni, the most audiobook version. He's, he's because he has a great voice and he's a good actor. That's and he's why. a he's a great. Cause he Unfortunately, th- the one thing the overwhelming majority of Bond fans know him for is perhaps the crappiest film in the entire series. But he's he's good in Dying the Day. Uh, but that's another uh, episode. Uh, but you know what? If you just because of him and the performance he gives, because he voices the character, I love him when he's reading uh, Rosa Klebb. She he, he sounds like he's doing the um, uh, the the witch from uh, the Wizard of Oz. Okay, it's got. The, I'm buying. I'm buying. I I love them. Like it's probably even like as much as I like the audiobook version of Moonraker, I think I like this one better. Nice. Because, so because of the performance of TB, Toby Stevens. Shout out to Toby Steve. I, I I follow him on Instagram, I think, and on the Twitters. TS, baby, TS. He's great, and I'm going to get my hands on the uh, uh, dra- dra- radio drama they're doing this weekend. It's, cool. it's um So, yeah, shout out. So, I'm going to put... I'm going to put From Russia With Love on top. Only took you 25 minutes, but I'm glad you made a decision. An hour and 26 minutes. So, let's ra- let's wrap this up. <laughs> Well, uh, we can be found in a few spots online. Uh, individually, I'm at uh, on Twitter at double O pop, the word double underscore O H underscore pop. Matthew, Matt O'Claire, with two T's. Collectively, we're in quite a few places. Yes, we're on Twitter at the Bond Complex. You can find us on Facebook at the James Bond Complex. You can find us on Instagram at the James Bond Complex. You can find us at the James Bond Complex dot com. And of course, why not subscribe on iTunes if you feel you, know, you got a couple of minutes? Write a little review. We're also on Anchor. We're on Anchor. Uh, give us some five stars. You know, you're under no obligation, but if it it helps us, I mean, get get like more exposure. Eventually, if you feel it in your heart, go ahead and give us a five star. If it feels right. Give us a five star review. Yeah, we appreciate uh, we appreciate your comments on on the Facebooks, on the Twitter. A little bit, little bit more and more yeah. since the last time. A little bit more. It's it's we're you know, it's slowly. People are paying attention. <laughs> people are no listening. Pressure. Keep, no, but I mean, I appreciate. It. I mean, every time, I'm like, oh, hmm. so I don't always write back, and sometimes I'm like, I want to confer confer with you. I'm like, okay, what are we writing? Sometimes I'm like, ah, it's Edgar's gonna be fine. But we we you read, know me so well. <laughs> we read every comment. We appreciate uh, your listenership, and I hope you stay, stick around. 
Um, so it's you know what has been an, I, this has nothing to do with from Russia with love, but what's been an interesting experience is because you and I were two individuals, but we're on the same show, so it gets kind of interesting because you do a little bit more of the Facebook. I'll, I'll publish something every once in a while, but seventy five to eighty percent of what's on Facebook tends to come from you. Seventy five to eighty percent of what's on Twitter tends to come from me spoilers for what goes on behind the scenes but I always have to hold back sometimes because I have my own Twitter account and I'm like okay, I can't say what I would say as double O pop I sort of have to clean it up and say it as the James Bond complex it yeah. gets kind of interesting sometimes oh we also on Instagram did I mention it I did mention okay. Instagram yeah so where that, that's entirely I have never I don't think I've even logged into that account <laughs> so it's mine um, so what's next for us Just as James Bond always returns, so too will the James Bond complex return in From Russia With Love, the film circa 1963. Mm -hmm. From Russia, Russia with love, love I fly to you, you. much wiser than I was before. Okay, I'm back. There we go. <laughs> mm, as always, merci beaucoup et à la prochaine. Au revoir.